okay, welcome back. Um, now we're going to get into uh, the frame assembly to show you how I assembled the model 3D printed parts once they were all done. Uh, as you can see, I have all the parts laid out here and I'm working rather vigorously. Um, I guess I must have had my coffee and Wheaties this morning. Anyway, uh, so this is the spine. Uh, spoken of uh, that I'm kind of laying out putting it in place and as you can see the seats already glued in it's one of the few times I've used glue in this project um, if I had a if I could go back and redesign it um, I would design it so I wouldn't need any glue here but it is what it is so I worked with what I had this is the front of the spine that I'm assembling uh, and I'm putting in the uh, steering column, trying to fit that in there. And I'm just snapping together the front and mid spine. I'm doing the same thing for the rear. Uh, these pieces go in the center. Uh, they're kind of uh, joints that lock the... Um, carriage to the spine. Now I've created slots to hold everything together. That front end was giving me trouble, so I just decided to take it off for now while I'm working on the rear. And as you can see, the seat uh, is kind of distributed throughout different parts of the frame kind of cups the rider. So yeah, everything's fitting together quite nicely with the uh, rear spine and the rear carriage. Um, nothing fits perfectly, of course. Um, you just got to work with what you got. <laughs> but and you don't see me using any glue here. Uh, all the pieces kind of hold hands, if you will, to just fit together. And it looks like I'm having a hard time here um, because everything's not in place. But once everything is in place, uh, it kind of holds itself together. It's like trying to build a Jenga tower. Popping the steering column back in. Yep, see? And the steering column slides into that joint piece that holds the carriage. Now what you see me doing here is assembling the steering arms, which will connect to the wheels that will steer the front wheels. Right now I'm trying to insert the pins to hold the arms inside the uh, mechanism I created for the steering. And there's the steering wheel. I just want to take a second and talk about these bearings that I came up with for my project. Uh, like I mentioned before, I wanted to make a um, hubless wheel. Uh, and to do that, you need special bearings. And special bearings cost a lot of money. Like if I wanted to order one of these bearings, which is about four inches or so from say McMaster car uh, it would have cost me at least a couple hundred dollars for one um, and I need eight two for each wheel so and as you can see they are 3d printed and they do allow for some smooth fairly smooth motion I mean it's not as perfect as steel balls um, precision machined bearings but it works for this project I just want to talk real quick about how they were constructed um, I this is how I laid out the balls on the printer bed printed 10 at a time um, I tried all sorts of configurations if I can get it to focus here 
um, tried all sorts of configurations, configurations of 100 or, you know, 50 or, you know, how many can I get on the bed at once? Um, and I found that uh, the longer that they're on the bed or the more moves that the head has to make, the more opportunities there were for the head to piece of filament to get snagged up on one of the balls because they're so small. Uh, these are three millimeters across that it would cause um, just just a mess. I would end, I'd end up with a mess every time I tried to do more than just 10 at a time. So I settled on 10 um, and that seems to work. They aren't perfectly round um, from the side. It looks perfectly round. Uh, but when I peel one off, let's see here. They are, I don't even know if you can see that on camera, a little pointy on the end there. Either way, I grab some sandpaper and I sand them down. Um, I put about a uh, about 70 or so um, in a bearing. This bearing here um, is a throwaway because it I, I skipped a layer when I printed this one out, and I don't know what happened. Um, but I put it together anyway. It's kind of it's kind of my little fidget toy I play with. I leave it on my nightstand just to play around with, and as you can see, it's pretty pretty smooth. You know, it spins well enough. I drive my wife crazy just playing with this next to her. Um, but the point is, it works. Um, and I was, because it works, I was able to do a custom design on the inner race and the outer race to fit the wheel design. So that's all I wanted to say about the bearings. Um, let's get on with some assembly. All right, so this is uh, the front wheel assembly. Right now I am attempting to uh, insert the rim inserts um, into the rim. Um, it just, I created those just for a hint of color pop. Um, wanted something interesting on the edge of the rim. Uh, and as you can see again, no glue, they just snap in. I'll accept that one there. Um, I had some trouble with that one because I have uh, rim inserts on both halves of the rim body um, and they're mirrored. So um, there are five of them on each side and that one was the wrong one. It went on the other side. You can see it fit in there so well I had to use a screwdriver to get it out. So just kind of organizing here trying to find the right one. Found it. Yay. Nice and smooth. Do the same for the other. Then I'll move on to the bearing installation. Now this is the rim insert. I'm just trying to line it up with these uh, slots I created for it. Created them on both sides so it would just hold the rim. It's also the thing that drives the wheel. It's the gear. You can see it just snaps together nice and tight. I created slots on the inside for the teeth on the outer race of the bearing. That's what allows the, the rim to spin on the bearing. You can see it spins pretty smooth there. Now, this is the part where I assembled the steering mechanism, which is, which is unique to the front rim. There's the drive gear. And there's the drive gear housing that spins inside of there. And this clamp here holds the steering ball and the steering mechanism. It makes up the steering mechanism. As you can see here, I screwed that up, put it in there without putting in the uh, suspension ball, the ball that the suspension arm attaches to. showing the slots 
that I created for everything. And again, no glue. There may be some glue here to hold that piece in. I didn't, I didn't think that through very well when I was designing um, under load that'll pop out. So maybe I'll go in and redesign something later. But for now, a little glue just to hold that yellow piece in. And as you can see, nice and smooth. So that will connect to the top of the gear housing, but not right now, as I will discover in a second here. Um, that needs to go inside the rim first. And what I'm installing there is the steering ball. That's the ball that the steering arm attaches to. So I'm sliding in the gear housing. It meshes with the rim insert gear. I'm going to insert the second bearing on the outside there. And the bearings have a nice tight fit on the inside. I just have to make sure that they're parallel to each other. So there's no binding. And as you can see, there isn't. And now I'm going to pop on the steering mechanism housing. As you can see, my steering mechanism still works and my gear works just fine. The last part of this is to put on the important part, the tire. And the A-arm that will hold the wheel to the chassis. Just holds that in with a pin. It also pivots. And this is the suspension arm that attaches to the suspension on the chassis. And that's it. Yeah, and you pretty much repeat the same part for the back wheel, except it's quite a bit larger than the front wheel. And the geometry is a little bit different because it doesn't have a steering portion. This blue piece I'm popping in is the motor mount. As I said before, I wanted each wheel to have its own driving motor. It has a suspension arm that pops onto a ball and an A arm that's held in with a pin. And that does it for that one. We're almost at a finishing point here. The next thing that I, I want to tackle is attaching the suspension system to the actual body of the car. All right, so this is the demonstration of what I'm talking about, the suspension system. The suspension arm, which will come from the wheel, which we've seen already, as this moves as the wheel moves up and down, it will push this rod this direction. And with this pin, this pivot point pinned down, it will have no choice but to move in and out of that cylinder compartment that I created. And it will move against this spring that I purchased from McMaster Car. Then we'll be on to the cowling. This is the front cowling, the mid, and the rear, or the tail of the cowling. I've already pre-attached everything, and I'll be making a video going over how I attach it to the frame. Thanks for watching, uh, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps the channel. And as always, may your creativity lead you to great things. Till next time on Make It So 3D, see ya.